six, I saw a picture of a wild beast being eaten by a boa constrictor. I was impressed, I did my best to draw a picture of my all. It looked like that. I asked the grown ups if it frightened them. They answered, why be scared of a hat? But it was not a hat, it was an elephant. The boa was digesting, I filled the rest in. So they told me to apply myself to history and grammar. I never asked them why. And when I could choose my own career, I took the path that brought me here. I fly. is my vocation now imagine if you can my plane and I a thousand meters high while all around the stars conduct their nightly conversation the stars shone down and kept their watch across the whole world one evening, under their watch in the desert, the pilot lost control of his plane and crashed. He found himself alone, not a person in sight. He realized with some desperation that he would have to fix his plane himself, and he only had enough water to survive for eight days. The first night, he went to sleep on the sand of the Sahara more isolated than a shipwrecked sailor on a raft in the middle of the ocean. Imagine his amazement when, at sunrise, he was awakened by a little voice. Please, draw me a sheep. What? Draw me a sheep. But what are you doing here? Please draw me a sheep. What's that thing? It isn't a thing. It's an airplane. It flies. I fly it. So you drop down from the sky? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Don't laugh. Please draw me a sheep. It's no use asking, I can't draw. That doesn't matter. I need a sheep to take back home. Please draw me a sheep. I need a sheep. Draw me a sheep. Please draw me a sheep. All right. I'll do what I can. This one is already quite safe. Draw me another. What about this? You can see for yourself that's not a sheep. It's a ram, it has horns. Is this one better? That shape's too old. Draw me another. I want a shape that will live for years. Draw me another one. 
One more try. This is the crate, the sheep is inside. Take it or leave it, I've work to do. This is just the kind I wanted. Look, he's sleeping. If you're good, I'll draw you a rope to tie him up. What a funny idea. He might get lost, he might run away. Well, if he couldn't go home, it's all so small. That's how the pilot met the little prince. It took days to find out more. He never answered the pilot's questions. Or even hurt him. It was the things he said by chance that, bit by bit, revealed the truth. Could he really see 44 sunsets in one day? The pilot eventually learned that the prince came from a tiny planet in a far off galaxy. Its name is Asteroid B612. I'm telling you this for the sake of the grown ups. Those of us who know about life don't care about names and numbers. On this tiny ball, which was his home, three volcanoes stood, luckily only 18 inches tall. One was extinct, but the other two were active and very convenient for heating his breakfast in the morning. He carefully tended to all three each day, even the extinct one. As he said, one never knows. Will my sheep eat bushes? Yes, of course. Will my sheep eat baobabs too? Baobab is a mighty tree, as tall as a church. It is the same as a sheep with a flower. But even baobabs start off small. First they're seeds, then they sprout. That's the time to pull them out. Listen. Can't you hear them? <laughs> Size of a bra. 
want a star as bad, bad, better than the trash. Seek and be your bad star, ferocious. Seek and bad, you've been had, doing bad, in bits and fears and flying far in the endless void is all that's left of an astral boy. If sheep eat bushes, will they eat flowers too? A sheep will eat anything it can find. Even flowers with thorns? Don't bother me now. I'm working on something serious. Serious? You talk like grown-ups. A man who says he's serious over and over isn't a man at all. He's just a mushroom. Ashamed. What mattered now of my hammer, my thirst, my fear of death? On one star, my planet, the Earth, there was a little prince who needed to be comforted. I felt awkward. I did not know how I could reach him. It's such a secret place, the land of tears. Here, I'll draw a muzzle for your sheep. Then your flower won't be eaten. The pilot could not understand the prince's feeling about this little flower, but in time, he learned more. The prince had found his flower as a sprout. Flowers had always been very simple on his planet, but one day, from a seed blown from no one knew where, a new flower had come up. The little prince had watched over it very closely. It might have been a new kind of baobab. He'd watered her and tended her. And, having been present at the first appearance of a huge bud, felt at once something miraculous would appear. She took her time and dressed herself, slowly. Then, one morning, exactly at sunrise, she suddenly showed herself. Blushed. 
afraid. The only thing I fear is a chill. <laughs> Don't worry. Here, now you'll be protected from the cold. Oh, please <laughs> The prince assumed he might never return to his planet, and so he tended to his three volcanoes, pulled up the last of the baobabs, and, having said goodbye to the rose, these final tasks felt all the more precious to him. He never knew how the rose had cried for him. She was far too proud. For his escape from his planet, he took advantage of the migration of a flock of wild birds. He started by visiting several nearby asteroids. At each planet, each grown-up was so preoccupied and selfish, he learned only that grown-ups are very strange. He first found himself on the planet of a king. The world is full of many different things, and all are subject to the will of kings. If I 
that grown-ups are very strange, the prince moved on. The king, of course, would say that it was they who commanded it. The prince traveled next to the planet of the businessman, who was too busy to even look up. Eleven and ten is twenty-one. Take it away, that leaves is none. What's that figure? Just a blot. Twenty thousand. Blot of what? Now let's see if I'm right or not. A million and one hundred. What? There's more to do, but not a lot. Two hundred and fifty million. What? I'm coming to the final decimal room. for error is infinitesimal. Add it up. And what have I got? Five hundred and one million. What? My curiosity is mounting. What are you counting? Mounting, mounting, mounting. mounting. There are those curious thingamajigs that live up in the sky. Pigs? Oh, listen, please, I said the skies. But can they be? Do you mean flies? Don't make silly guesses, please. They're sometimes rather shiny. Bees! No, no, those things that gleam at night. When lazy people take delight in daydreams and such tra la la. Every star's my private property. How can a person own a star? I find that question quite bizarre. When with pen and ink I've jotted the name, a star has been allotted. I lock the paper in a drawer to prove my ownership in law. On my planet there's a flower. I water her every hour and care for my three volcanoes so they don't smoke. I am useful to these things. Your stars don't know that you exist. Do you think owning them is useful? Useful, useful, useful. A hundred and two, give or take a few. Seventy-five, a hundred and ten. The prince remarked to himself that grown-ups are certainly extraordinary and continued on his quest for a wider world. But the next planet he found was very small. There was only room for one person and a lamp. It was the planet of the lamplighter. I light my lamp when the sun is sinking low and wait for dawn's approving glow. And when the morning skies are bright, respectfully,
although this was the first person he met who seemed to think of something besides himself. The prince knew he could not stay. The planet was too small for them both. The lamplighter suggested he visit the planet Earth, which, unlike the asteroids, was quite large. He spoke of Earth's beauty and that its own lamplighters come out each night and tend their lights, lighting them across all the world, an entire world alight with man-made stars. Before the prince met the pilot, he fell to earth. He was surprised to find it so empty. It was lonely. But then he saw his star so far away, shining so brightly, because of the flower he had left behind. And very soon, not far from where he had fallen, he came across a snake, who explained that there were no people in this part of earth, because it was a desert. The prince thought the snake was a funny creature so small, and without even any legs. He laughed and said he couldn't be very powerful. The snake told him, I am more powerful than a king's finger. I can take you farther than a ship to a place in the An innocent child away, away from home. Daring to dream that you find what you seek in a place of grit and granite. Don't you miss your tiny planet? Aren't you lonely where you are? Let me ease your anxious mind. Let my little Like a bracelet casting gold I will help you seek I will help you find your way back home You are traveling Because I 
The prince walked on. He climbed a mountain. He called out, hello, but never heard an answer. The earth was empty as before. He walked through sand and rocks and snow. At last he found a garden full of common roses. Good morning. Good morning. The prince had thought that in all the stars, his flower was unique. Now he'd found a thousand other flowers as lovely, vain, and weak. Did it mean his flower was ordinary? Just one of a dozen silly roses on a silly little planet with a trail of volcanoes neatly swept? Was that all he was prince of? He wept. Good morning. Who are you? You're very pretty. I'm a fox. You're a stranger here. Are you looking for chickens? No, I'm looking for friends. I miss my planet where my flower grows. I'm afraid now she's just an ordinary rose. Stay and play with me. Well, I can't play with you. I haven't been tamed. What does it mean to tame? Just a little boy that's putting it politely To you I'm just a fox, there's a million others like me But if you tamed me, oh, that will change For me you'd be the only boy I'd recognize I'd be one in a million I would be With a plot that never thickens The hunters hunt the foxes And the foxes hunt the chickens Look across the valley See that field of growing wheat Its beauty doesn't interest me There's nothing there to eat But if you tamed me Once we made a time Hey, hey. 
here's my secret. It's quite simple. Listen before you leave. Eyes can see. your adventures for the last eight days, but there is something we need to talk about. My plane is a wreck, my water bottle's empty, if we don't find a well, we will die of thirst. But my friend the fox wants This to has me. nothing to do with the fox. You don't understand the danger. Even if you're going to die, it's nice to have had a friend. Come. I'm thirsty too. Let's look for a well. We'll go find it beneath my star. They walked long and far. I love the desert. What makes it beautiful is what cannot be seen. I'm glad my pilot and my fox agree. I'm Eventually, the prince was too tired to go on. The pilot carried him in his arms. His body felt so delicate. I feared that it might break. What I was holding was a shell. Fragile and opaque What mattered most was hidden Deep inside the tiny frame He was the lamb in which His love burned brightly as a flame
like a miracle. The well had everything they needed. A bucket, a pulley. It was like a well from a village. Well, what are you waiting for? Aren't you thirsty? The pilot understood what the prince had been looking for. This water was different from ordinary nourishment. Its sweetness was born of the walk under the stars, the song of the water, the effort of the pilot's strong arms to carry him and turn the pulley. The people of Earth raise 5,000 roses in the same garden, and they do not find in it what they are looking for. What they are looking for could be found in one single rose, or in a little water. Once they felt refreshed and satisfied, the prince cautiously told the pilot it was time for him to return home to his own star. It was almost the anniversary of his fall to Earth. He told the pilot to go back to his airplane and return the next night to the spot by the well which was not far from the place he first arrived. The pilot did not know that the prince would be visiting the snake, who promised to send him quickly back home to his star. When the pilot returned, he brought news that he had successfully repaired his airplane. Even so, quietly, his heart was heavy. He felt afraid, and he did not understand why. I have to go now. My star is high above me, but please do not be upset. I'm not about to die. All that you see is just a shell, and there's nothing sad about a shell. Anything essential is invisible to the eye. I'll miss your laugh. <laughs> Take it then. It is my present to you. My star is too small to find among the others, but you will look at the stars and you will know that I'm among them. Only you will have stars that can laugh. I have the sheep, I have the crate, I have the muscle, I need it so. I must protect my rose. Don't keep me. Let me go.
walked around the desert, the loveliest place on earth, the loneliest, the saddest. Watch it closely. If you see it, stay a moment, wait a while beneath a star. And if a child arrives with golden Tell me he's returned. I'll be consoled.